Joining me now is the director of Across the Line, Director X. Welcome, it's great to have you here. Yeah, thanks for having me. You are now one of the top hip hop directors out there. How, what was your, describe your journey to get there. What, what kind of hustle does it take to get to this place? Well, I slept my way to the top, so. <laughs> you chose well, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, um, I, I, I started out as an intern. I did that thing, very, started out as an intern, just working your way up and being in the mix. My, my mentor is a guy named Hype Williams, who is, you know, he's an adjective in the world. You know, I want a Hype Williams video. People say <laughs> okay. stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So learning from him, just being in that environment, and then it was really uh, the hip hop labels, like Def Jam gave me my first shot. You mentioned that uh, Hype Williams is a mentor of yours. You worked with him on his film, Belly. Mm -hmm. How did you meet him? Um, through my internship, I mean, I, I uh, saw an article about him in Vibe magazine and sent out a package to the office. It's a long story, but I eventually had to go to the office wanting my stuff back. And <laughs> <laughs> You guys have had was, it long enough. I, I was young, I was young. I was like, yo. <laughs> but while there, there's one person in the office, an office manager, you're watching this. Hmm. He watched it, go, oh, you should meet somebody. And then that person watched it, goes, oh, yeah, I just want an intern. Like I know I can, I know I'm good enough to work for free. And then that came into my that journey. So you have directed some of the most iconic videos of the last two decades: Rihanna, Drake, Jay Z, Usher, Justin Bieber. They all look distinct, but somehow they all look like you. Where do you start? Like an image, a mood, an idea? Um, you start with the record, what's actually gonna be best for the song. So mm -hmm. you're trying to get that right mood, get that, it should be an extension, it should add to what the song is. So that's always the first step. So is there something in the lyric that suggests like the setting and the mood? And It the... might be lyrics, it might be just the mood of the song. Like Hotline Bling isn't based on the lyrics, Hotline Bling is based on the mood, mm -hmm. just the vibe, it feels like this. What are some of the artistic influences that you like to bring into your work? I come from uh, illustration. So one of my first influences was comic books, but I, I bring that with me. I had a graphic design sensibility that was very strong. So I thought I was gonna be a graphic designer for a while, which is part of what that, like you see it in Hotline Bling, you see it in the Sean Paul, but you see when I do art directed work, mm -hmm. okay, you can tell that's me. I'm very mm -hmm. much a part of the design process. Then I just get into art of all, I'll, I'll go fine art, I'll go pop art, I'll, you know, toys that people, and whatever, wherever it comes from, whatever it is, and just, you, you just take it all in. I'm a, I'm a firm believer that anything you lay your eyes upon belongs to you. And did you know that the Hotline Bling was gonna just explode the way it did? That's just that simple box with him inside Not it? Not like that. I thought when we were doing it, I go, oh, okay. So for the hip hop world, I think we got a, a video that people are gonna, you know, be a little, be a thing for us. Mm -hmm. Then for it to explode so big, like no one can predict that. Yeah. You know, you can't even, and I, I'm, I'm superstitious, so I don't, I don't like to, this is gonna be, <laughs> uh, do that yeah. stuff. Yeah. I'm pretty sure my mom would recognize it though. Like I feel yeah. like everybody recognizes that thing now. I mean, yeah, it's got, you know, I got a, I got Donald Trump dancing to hot, to the parody to Hotline <laughs> Bling that Saturday Night Live did mm -hmm. was just when Donald Trump hosted. He's dancing on a, my set. <laughs> How do you feel about that right now, X? I mean, <laughs> it's all my fault, I guess. <laughs> So Across the Line is obviously based on some true stories. What what drew you in? What part of that made you want to make it into a film? The whole thing, I mean, growing up in Toronto, we had, I had Scotian friends, we call them Scotians, right? And uh, they had to have these parties in their own little language and it's just a very different culture and their background was different. So I've always known about this world mm -hmm. and been to North Preston one or two times before. So when the opportunity came to do a movie about that community, it was like, okay, I, you know, I felt this is right. And then being Canadian for my first picture to be a Canadian story about our black, historic black community, as opposed to an immigrant type tale about a Jamaican kid that came, you know what I mean? Or some mm -hmm, kind of mm -hmm. Toronto story. I like doing it about something so historical, you know, that um, the church in the opening credits, it says 1863 or something, established in 1863, some crazy, crazy like, We've got history. The long history of the black long people in history. Scotia. Yeah. And yet the race relations are still tough there. What was that like for you to tackle? 
Um, I, I had to go in and kind of research it and see what was going on and begin to understand that North Preston is not around the corner from Halifax. Mm. It's across a bridge, then mm. a long drive, and then you turn a corner and go take another long drive down a lonely road, and at the end of the road is North Preston. Again, the opening credits of the film, that's the journey. So mm -hmm. you have these communities that are very distant and been that way for over a century. Then, especially in the, in, the, in the events that inspired this story was this riot in 89, where the black kids from North Preston and the white kids from uh, Eastern Passage, which is a working class neighborhood, got in, had a big riotous brawl in their high school. These kids never mixed until high school. You were in North Preston, and it, it, North Preston is homogeneously black. When you talk to some of the, the guys out there, like, yeah, they didn't even see white people until, <laughs> you know what I mean? They just wasn't in their world. And then you put them in a box and their, you know, teenage years with all, you know, it just, it, it was... And expect that it's all gonna... Yeah, yeah, yeah. How much do you think has changed? I think a lot, a lot I think a lot has changed. Uh, you know, it was a long, it was a long time ago, but there's always, you know, it's, it's racism. It's, we, we, ain't, we, ain't, we ain't out of it yet. We, mm -hmm. we see what's going on around the world. Uh, so yeah, they still got their they still got their problems over there. So what's next for you? It's working, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All right, what's your dream project? Uh, rebooting the Transformers franchise Ooh. properly. <laughs> I think a, they could use you. I yeah. mean, come on, I won't nerd out right here, but uh, <laughs> I mean, I'm a, I'm a big fan of. Um, comic books and big, I call it Big Imagination. Mm -hmm. I really love Big Imagination work, but I need uh, need some of that, hmm. you know, gotta stand up to some nerd scrutiny. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, well, Director X, it has been a pleasure having you here. It's been great to talk to you, and thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Thanks for, for having me. In.